Hello Figment, my name is Chris Wilson. In this video, we will go over the evolution of data transfer, why Web3 is important, and how Figment enables developers of all kinds to learn and build a decentralized internet. But first, what is Web3? Well, in short, it's a back-end revolution. Much how Web2 was a front-end revolution, Web3 will revolutionize how the back-end operates. Know from whence you came. If you know whence you came, there are absolutely no limitations to where you can go. James Baldwin. Past. The standalone computer in Web1. In order to understand where we are going, it's important first to know where we came from. In the beginning, there was the standalone computer, and your personal computer contained everything. If you wanted to share a file from your computer, you would have to download the file to a floppy disk and walk it over to the person you wanted to share the file with. They would then need to download the file from the floppy to their computer in order to use it. If you wanted to share the file with someone in another country, you would need to mail the floppy disk to them. Now you can only imagine how slow it would be to collaborate with someone on the other side of the world, let alone a team of people using this system. From this frustration with how information was shared, we built the first iteration of the internet. The emergence of the World Wide Web eased that frustration by introducing a data transmission protocol, TCP over IP, making the transfer of data faster. It also massively reduced the transaction costs of exchanging information. We call this iteration of the World Wide Web, Web 1. Present, Web 2, and P2P. 10 years later, we saw the rise of what we are now calling Web 2. This evolution was possible due to the addition of protocols to transfer additional information. This allowed a more programmable internet using protocols like HTTP for hypertext and SMTP for emails. The internet we currently use, Web 2, is building on the concept of the standalone computer. These protocols control the transmission of data, but not how that data is stored. Data can be stored in many ways. However, as technology developed, centralized data storage became standardized, often facilitating payments between two untrusted parties. This brought on the e-commerce and social networking boom and exposed vulnerabilities in the current data architecture. We can see this in the data breaches of centralized servers happening almost on a daily basis, bringing producers, consumers, and goods and service closer together than ever before. This was a front-end revolution building on to and reiterating the standalone computer model. While these platforms have done a great job creating a P2P economy, they alone dictate all rules of the transactions, and they control all data of their users. In Web2, data is centrally stored and managed on servers by institutions. There's always a middleman acting as a trusted intermediary between two people who do not trust each other, firewalls to protect that data on those servers, and people are also needed to manage these servers and their firewalls. Trying to hack into a server resembles breaking into a house where a fence and an alarm system provide security, much like the standalone computer is protected by its own fence, alarm, and a person to manage it. We keep building out the same model, just on a bigger scale with each iteration. That sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. The current Web 2 has no way to send what computer scientists call state. The simplest definition of state is simply to remember. By definition, State is the last known or current status of an application or a process. The term maintaining state and or managing state refers to keeping track of the condition of the process. This iteration of the internet, Web 2, is essentially stateless because each request for a new web page is processed without any knowledge of previous pages requested. This is one of the main drawbacks of the HTTP protocol. Now, because maintaining state is extremely useful, developers built a number of techniques to add state to Web2 through the use of cookies and server APIs. But Web2's protocols require us to use these internet platforms to facilitate our transactions as a workaround for this lack of state. If you can hold the state of the internet, you can transfer value without the need for centralized institutions to act as clearing entities. And that brings us to the future which, if you didn't know already, is blockchain. Blockchain protocols introduced a way for each person in a network to keep and transact with a digitally native format without the need for a centralized institution to act as a middleman. 
The consensus protocol is designed in a way that the entire network can remember preceding events and user transactions. Blockchain has resolved this problem by providing a single source to reference the state. In this context, blockchain is a driving force of the next generation internet, Web3. Blockchain reinvents the way data is stored and managed. It provides a unique set of data, a universal state layer that is collectively managed. This unique state layer, for the first time, enables a value settlement layer for the internet. It allows us to send files in a copy-protected way, enabling true P2P transactions without intermediaries. As the backbone of Web3, blockchain redefines the data structures in the back end of the web. Now that we live in a connected world, it introduces a governance layer that runs on top of the current internet, which allows for two people who do not know or trust each other to reach and settle agreements over the web. However, nothing much will change on the surface of the internet for the average user. While Web 2 was a front-end revolution, Web 3 is a back-end revolution. It is a set of protocols led by blockchain that intends to reinvent how the internet is wired in the back-end, combining the logic of the internet with the logic of the computer. This is why some refer to blockchain as the distributed world computer. Blockchain technology is the next big step in the development of computers and the internet. Data Hub, your Web 3 gateway. Now that we know where we came from, where we are, and where we want to go, we can start to see the steps to get there. Much like blockchain, Figment shares similar tenets. You can think of Figment like the roots of a tree. A tree to seed and foster the growth of a forest. A decentralized forest of developers to build out the envisioned Web3 ecosystem. Our purpose is to provide everything a developer would need in order to start from zero and end up with a viable Web3 application as quickly and painlessly as possible. At Figment, we have two main implementations to help the growth of Web3. The first is Data Hub. Through Data Hub, developers will have access to Web3 protocols through our enterprise-grade infrastructure. We make sure they can focus on what they do best, develop amazing products. We provide reliable access to the RPC and REST APIs of our supported protocols for both the latest mainnets and testnets, allowing our users to safely test and implement their product. Web3's future is interconnected and modular. Use Celo's speed and identity protocol to leverage Ethereum's community on Matic. Store your NFT metadata on Arweave while you query your smart contract with the graph. And encrypt your user's data with NewCypher. This is the future of Web3 decentralized applications that will enable groundbreaking innovation. Web2 is well documented with many knowledge bases, communities, and code repositories. However, Web3 falls painfully short of what developers have come to expect. Current blockchain developer documentation varies from protocol to protocol with little consistency in standards. It's already painful enough to learn about one protocol. It's almost impossible to compare them and to know which ones to add to your decentralized application, or DAP for short. That's where Figment Learn comes in. Figment Learn is the Web3 knowledge base. We have embarked on a mission to introduce more developers to Web3 by simplifying the experience for its users and shining the light on Web3's potential. Learn is the education and onboarding platform for developers interested in Web3 development. With Learn, developers gain access to the most comprehensive developer portal, which standardizes documentation across networks and offers in-depth practical tutorials to help you get to the next level. Tutorials can be completed seamlessly with Data Hub, which provides easy access to the protocols via our full node infrastructure and suite of middleware. To foster our community, Figment is partnering with foundations to reward developers for building on Web3 protocols and sharing their knowledge with others. Developers have the ability to write tutorials to expand the knowledge base and earn tokens in the process. This community-generated content complements the available documentation to help developers go from zero to one and further when developing new protocols. Learn will grow with its community to foster social interactions and mentorship, so developers are no longer on their own when embarking on this new journey. We envision Learn as the place where developers interact with each other, teach each other, and share their groundbreaking projects with the world. No matter what stage you are in your journey, we have something for everyone.
It is only through togetherness that we can realize the true benefits of Web3 and bring prosperity to all. Thank you for sticking through this video. You can join Figment, Data Hub, and our Learn community of over a thousand plus developers on Discord and the Figment forums. Links for all of that will be in the description. As always, if you had any questions regarding this video or would like to discuss Data Hub or Web3 Tech, you can join our Discord in the link down below. I look forward to seeing you there, and until next time, happy coding. <laughs>